I was over 40 years passing. I never even caught a finger. Always very lucky, very lucky. We were casting a game to a house when the accident happened. A normal morning, and we put up some scaffolding. And my son, he was just passing up a second plank when the one I was standing on broke. Dad fell in the ground and I realised that we were in big trouble because he was unresponsive. I was about 10 feet up. I think myself, I hit my head off a bear, off the, off the scaffolding bear, but I'm not sure. And I realised that we were too serious because there was blood in the ground. So I got onto the ambulance services and I kind of held his head for a while. We had to wait a long time then for the ambulance and it took about an hour overall. I couldn't talk. I can't remember a thing. I th when I woke up first, I didn't know had a wife, had a family, had a cows, had a farm, what I had. I was happy I was just lying there. I couldn't, I had no care in the world. But I'm on warfare at the moment. My speech is not as good as it used to be. But I'm coping with, I'm coping with that. We did a lot for him and I think he relied on us heavily as well. Um, we, I suppose we'd always be close and we adore him. But, um, I guess if it was trying and it was testing and I suppose personal hygiene and all that had to be done for a while and all that is very uncomfortable for a man. Um, but I think he was very determined. I think his nature is very determined and he was very positive and motivated and um, yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have liked for him to do it on his own, I suppose. I suppose we were kind of rushing a bit to get the scaffolding up and I suppose we cut a few corners maybe if the truth be known. But I suppose we should have been more alert to the dangers and things, but we weren't. We're rushing, rushing too much. We didn't think. If the plank had been new, I, that's just three inches thick. And if the plank had been new, I, I'd never have gone down. But the plank broke, the plank was old. The plank broke under me. Well, it's a, the biggest mistake I made was I wasn't wearing a helmet. And we had three helmets in the van. And we were rushing too much and never thought of the helmet. And if I had been wearing a helmet, it wouldn't have happened at all. It was on the 23rd of October that I had my little girl, Sarah. The day she was born, he came down. His speech came back. He seemed to all of a sudden recover. And then the baby was born, and a few days after the baby was born, I had my talk back. My, my turning point, yeah. As Dad always says, that two of us went into the hospital and three of us came out. Oh, I'm just so proud of Dad too, that he's actually a very positive man. Mm. Yeah, that he's a positive man. He could have taken it so differently. I said the big lesson would be safety first. Safety first. In order to be competent in any activity, you need to have completed training, and health and safety is no different. Courses are available in many locations, but there are safe paths, obviously, for general construction workers, but management training like the Construction Industry Federation's Managing Safety in Construction prepares site management and owners of small companies to manage the issue that they must deal with. The Health and Safety Authority has provided a lot of resources, particularly to help small contractors. All our guidance, codes of practice are free to download on our website. Our workplace contact unit is available to take technical queries. We also have code of practice for three or less and a Be Smart Construction now available, which is a free risk assessment online tool.